Hello and welcome back, everybody. This is Randy Replay, Minnesota Vikings football back online and back on the air here on the SSN. The day is here. Week six of the NFL pits the Green Bay Packers against the Minnesota Vikings here at U.S. Bank Stadium. <sighs> now, the Packers go without their running back wide receiver Ty Montgomery while the Minnesota Vikings are out without their starting wide uh, running back, Travis Parker. Going to have to make do with everybody else on the roster. It has been working since he has been injured in week one after only three carries to start the season. The NFC North division is very close atop. Are the Packers at 3-2? Lions are 2-3. We're 2-3. And the Bears are 2-3. The Lions are at Saints. The Bears are at the Ravens. And the Packers are here. So, lots of scenarios here. If we lose, we fall to 2-4. And, and we need uh, we need some help in the division for the Lions and Bears to lose. Of course, the Saints need to beat the Lions. I don't know if I said that before, but the Saints need to beat the Lions. They are at the Saints. Um, and then the Ravens need to take care of the Bears, something that should happen as the Ravens are having a pretty good season. Uh, we're not going to waste too much more time. Um, if you remember back, one game removed from the crazy game in Chicago. We're going to get into these player stats. Make 511 yards, five touchdowns. Longest pass of 50 yards. Most of his uh, passes went to tight ends, as you can see. Tight ends were getting open. Of course, Luis Gonzalez got in there for two touchdowns. Travis Lee, five catches, 92 yards. Averaging 18 yards a catch. That's how open he was getting. We need good play from these tight ends and receivers again. And then the rushing, of course. Justin Sandman, 16 carries, 108 yards a touchdown. Three touchdowns for these running backs. That's what we need here at home. We were away. Now we're at home, and we need good production out of the offense and the defense. If the defense plays like they do in the second half of game so far in the first half, and the offense scores five, four touchdowns um, like they did in the Bears game, we have this game under wraps. So we're not going to waste any more time. Randy Replay is here adjacent to the biggest rotating doors in the NFL in the broadcast area. And we are ready for kickoff. This has been Randy Replay. I will see you at halftime. Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. Today's game features one of the best offenses in the NFL. The Vikings come in as the top offense in the NFL and they'll go up against a Packers defense that wants to meet that challenge head on. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon God and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, it's one of the new jewels of the NFL, no doubt, as you get a look inside U.S. Bank Stadium here in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with the Green Bay Packers. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you look at this Vikings ball club. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for the visiting Packers, we're in October now, so everything, everybody should be coming into form, shouldn't they? They really should, and what you have now is a full routine established about what you want to get done and full focus on the season. Fielded about a yard deep. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. 
So here comes the Packers offense now onto the field. They'll be led out by their highly decorated quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. Well, his ratio was good last week. Most quarterbacks are really excited about a three-to-one ratio, but it's flipped in the wrong direction. <laughs> he threw three interceptions, not touchdown passes, and he only had the one TD pass in that game. So he's trying to turn that around and find a way for his team to win. Now it's Rodgers, and his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. The new acquisition, Martellus Bennett, the intended target, and it's second down. To throw is Rodgers. Throwing again. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Play fake, Rodgers. And that's incomplete. Coming in, carrying the losing streak, not the start that they were looking for. Three and out on the opening drive. So now everyone's looking at each other. And what I mean by that is, who's going to make the right play? Who's going to get us out of the doldrums? Who's going to get us out of this funk that they're in right now? They've got to find someone who will make a play, create a play, and get their confidence moving in the right direction. Taken in at the 11. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him onto the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Second down following the incompletion. Now a handoff looking right, and he's got room. And he cuts right sideline and some room to go. A big play there for Minnesota, 49 yards. The ultimate speedster showing that speed in front of this home crowd, they loved it. Made me stand up on that run because right now all I want to do is wave to the crowd. More noise, more noise. You got to reward him for that one. A big time monster run. Taken down near the 20 at the 21. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. See if they stay on the ground for second down. The 
Play action fake. They'll look to throw. Escaping the pressure right. A good decision in the end to pull it one. Get some nine yards in a first. That was an excellent job of recognizing the situation. His first read wasn't there. Heck, his second read wasn't there. But he bought himself a little extra time scrambling out of the pocket, got to the sticks, and picked up the first down. Back to throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Now they try the right side here, and they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive, and normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. Buying time to his left. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. So that's the rookie's first trip to the end zone, and I think it's safe to say one he'll always remember. Oh, without a doubt, that one is going to be imprinted forever. And nowadays, we're seeing rookies make a greater impact at that position at receiver than ever before. I think mainly because of the sheer volume of footballs that they catch in college. Now they'll line up to kick the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. Man-to-man -man maybe needs some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Now Rodgers. This will be caught inside the 10. And they do get him down, but he's inside the 5 all the way to the 3. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Have you gotten used to seeing Martellus Bennett in number 80? I mean, he's been number 88 his entire career, right? And how about that? The fans selecting his jersey number. Yeah, that was his idea. He put that out there on social media and said, here, here are a few choices. What should I wear? And he went with what the fans picked. Over 100,000 people weighed in. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. A well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah. And he'll take this one in for a Packer touchdown. Latavius Murray. For the game, as we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play. They look for him to try it again later. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Now the Packers get set to go. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense. We got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Here's Murray. Latavius Murray. He's at the 50, the 30, the 20, 10, and he takes it down deep into enemy territory. A big run that time by Murray. A massive pick up there. Well, that right there is the definition of flipping the field. Trainer, trainer. Only reason I say that, you know he's going to need that oxygen yeah. after that one. But what a scintillating run, and how much fun was that? Blitz coming, and down he goes. Well, that was point counterpoint, wasn't it? They decided to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Green Bay touchdown. 
A great effort there. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Flushed out right. Now he's going to throw deep. That's caught at the 25. They give him a gain of 38. And the young buck showing that ability, that agility to dance outside of the pocket, complete the deep ball. And don't think for a second that the coaching staff didn't have their heart rate accelerate a little bit there, right? Anytime you have those young quarterbacks and they get outside of the pocket, you're just hoping that they make good decisions because so many things can happen that can go wrong when you throw it downfield like that. He got away with it there and in a big way. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Before they can get settled in here, time expires on the first quarter of action. 14-7 is the score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football. They've got a second down at five here to start things out. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Now let's go. Green, 39. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get about four there as he takes it from the 10 down to the 6. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yes, now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Right, Run it again, Green, or they can go play action and try and put it in that way. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Flush to his right. And he's going to score. It's a Viking touchdown. It's their quarterback. His second touchdown of the game, giving him 12 on the season. And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this thing up. So a quarterback scramble, certainly a pass play, but he saw something, tucked it, and got in the end zone. A lot of quarterbacks, when they scramble, they're scrambling to create more time to throw the ball downfield. In this situation, as you noted, he tucked it and took off. Out, not in this case. They go play action here on first down. Let's it fly deep for Cobb. They got his man complete. 20. Touchdown. Packers. Randall Cobb, 83 yards. Does expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense? The and a double coverage, and it's intercepted. It's Nick Perry with a pick, and they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. Receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So you got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Now that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelmed, because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. Again, it's Murray. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. And a nice job defensively to keep him out of the end zone. He's trying to get a second touchdown already in the first half. They had that one earlier, was bidding for a second. Rodgers looking to throw on third and two. And he's got the connection to his tight end, Bennett. Touchdown, Packers. While checking in on what's going on in Baltimore. And it's the Ravens that have moved out to an early advantage. Joe Flacco, a single touchdown pass to this point in that one. He'll drop to throw. He's going to go for it. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. 
These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, <laughs> but offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really bunch them up when we have a tight game here. You know, we often talk about having the right shoes for the right turf. Today, it's track shoes. That's what we've seen with these offenses. Yeah, it's been an absolute track meet so far. Throwing is Rodgers on third down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. This will be caught by Nelson for a Packer touchdown. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Steps away to his left. He may try and run for this. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. Well, partner, nothing comes open here, so he decides to escape out of there, and he doesn't pick up a first down, but he does gain additional yardage to set up a possible field goal attempt if they decide to go that route. So two minutes to go in a wild first half. More from Minneapolis after this. A reminder with halftime approaching, when we get there, we'll ship you off to Orlando. Larry Ridley will have first half highlights and analysis. And I hope he's iced down his throat because he's got a lot to get through <laughs> because we've had no shortage of points scored in the first half. It has been a fun track meet. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. <laughs> Way easier said than done. <laughs> a big hit. Knocked down sideways at the 33. Nine yards on the pickup there as he'll be left with third and one. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? But you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field. And they're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass them with a running play. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Rodgers again here on second and ten. Caught by Cobb. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. To throw is Rodgers. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. 
I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you got to figure, if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. to throw now on second and ten going up top he's got a man complete and all the way down to the 26 and now we won't see a play on first down we're going to get a timeout instead as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaughan alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. So here we go, first and 10 now. They're going to look to throw. Oh, he had six points in his hands there. Couldn't hang on. Second down. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. The Vikings on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 17. They'll look to throw here. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Ricky Jean Francois in there to drop him, and back-to-back -back sacks now bring up fourth and long. Now on fourth down, we've got a whistle here and a timeout as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. Shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. He's going to fire this thing deep right sideline. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. Mike Zimmer got to be unhappy with how that turned out. And the Packers' D comes up with a big stop. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Elsewhere, a score update from New Orleans. And it's an early lead there for the Saints. Drew Brees with one touchdown pass thus far. And hello and welcome to your halftime break. Um, it couldn't be worse. But then again, it could also be better. The uh, Minnesota Vikings down by the, by 11 points uh, here at the halftime break. Going for the end zone on that last drive of the first half, we, uh, uh, excuse me, must have been this bad soda I'm having. Um, maybe try to force it a little bit. The defense of the Packers came up, got two big sacks. We just missed on the throw to Blake Letelier. Give it back to the Packers, and then they score. Um, the couple deep throws, I know Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb. The defense just broke down. Uh, this defense, which started the game out so strong, only allowing, I do believe, seven points in the first quarter. Uh, 14 points in the first quarter, sorry. Um, 
And then uh, allowing 21 points in the second. Now, historically, we have played better in the second half here. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, we get the ball to begin the second half. So we're going to get you back out to the field and um, out to the second half of football. But first, let's get into these stats for the first half. So make 103.2 QB rating. He's 14 for 24. That is 58% completion percentage. For those of you that didn't know how to do math or didn't look over here, 243 yards, two touchdowns, and he had the one interception to the linebacker. Rushing, Justin Sandman has seven carries for 58 yards, but it's Smeagol, four carries, 33 yards in the touchdown, who uh, has the only rushing touchdown of this game. Receiving, Blake Letelier, four for 102 and a touchdown. Anthony Bisbee, two for 14. Luis Gonzalez, two for 12. Travis Lee, two for 21. And Darian Wilson channeling his inner Randy Moss. Of course, those of you that aren't catching up with the series, channeling your inner Randy Moss is when Randy says, or when, uh, is what Randy says when a player has one catch for one touchdown, or two for two, three for three, you know what I mean. Uh, the 35-yard big bomb down the field there. Um, we're going to take a look at drops. There have been a lot. Uh, Josh Gable with one. Uh, Justin Sandman had one on a big throw down the field. Um, they're really testing the deep ball here. That uh, Darian Wilson touchdown uh, last game against Chicago really gave him confidence. Hey, the Bisbee had a drop, and then Lou Wang had a drop. Nobody cares about blocking, so we're going to go to defense and look at... There we go, total tackles. Jerry Myers with four, Robert Nichols with three are your leaders. <laughs> Excuse me, tackles for last. We had four by Ryan Bilo, Josiah Russell, Jacob Picker, and Jerry Myers. Only got to Aaron Rodgers once in the first half, and that was uh, Jacob Pickering. Terrell Oliver had a chance to get it, uh, get Aaron Rodgers, but he did miss on the tackles. So, interceptions, we might have had one by Aaron Nelson. He just uh, kept his back to the ball. He'd thrown right to him. He just had his back to the ball. Um, three pass deflections by Jerry Myers, breaking up passes by Aaron Rodgers. So, uh, the first half, I think the game, uh, it would have been closer, but Jerry Myers with those three pass deflections having a great day today. Otis McMiller, Jacob Pickering, and Matthew Arnster also have pass deflections. No forced fumbles, no fumbles recovered. No blocks, no safeties, and no defensive touchdowns for your Minnesota Vikings. Kicking. Brandon Baker has been perfect today. One for one and three for three on extra points. Longest of 47. We're going to get you back out to kickoff in the second half here where the Minnesota Vikings trail 35-24. This has been Randy Replay. I will see you after the game where I can hopefully call a Vikings win. We'll see how this goes. Aaron Rodgers, 227, three touchdowns. Smigel, 243, two touchdowns. Smeagol being the better quarterback in terms of completion percentage. I will see you after the game. Locked in on offense. They'll run it now out of the gun. Room here to run. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. This has been a good drive so far. It's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice first there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and ten, as you said, in the red zone. And the offense readies for play number ten of this series. Over the Lampert. Lampert. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. A gain of three, second down. Now, I can't imagine any celebrations being any bigger than your first NFL touchdown. And this rookie running back is still seeking his. He's not going to get it on that play. Let's go. Green, 39. Green, 39. Over, over. Over, over. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. A lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Vikings on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of ten thus far. This is third and seven. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. That's going to be caught at the 10 yard line, and he'll get it here to the 10 yard line. 
And this one is right through. And that'll make this an eight-point game. A team towards a victory. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. This will be caught by Nelson for a Packer touchdown. Jordy Nelson with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Packers add six to their lead. You have fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about, you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone, this guy's in the master class right now. What Offensively, they're going to have to figure this out before next week. Seven sacks in one game. Yeah, that's more than any quarterback should have to bear. And if this continues on, there will be another quarterback in the game because no one can stand up to this week after week. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Back to throw now on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Jake Ryan leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. Back to throw here. The swing pass caught. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air. Because right now, we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that in. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. From midfield, here's Rodgers. Airing it deep for Janice. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Not too many missteps in the red zone thus far. He was going for his fifth touchdown pass. His man couldn't shake free there, but boy, you know he's going to take another shot before this one's over. Yeah, exactly, because you know three is good, three is excellent. You get five, that's a whale of a game. He's going to float this one deep right side. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. Now let's go. Three. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. It's a seven-yard gain that gets him back to the original line of scrimmage. Third and ten. This has been an up-and-down, back-and-forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. He'll drop to throw. Forced out to his left. Hard throw, incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, maybe he said, forget about the sticks. We want six. And his kick is good. And that'll move him back within six now. They go with Murray again. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Latavius Murray. Now Rodgers. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Devontae Adams. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's going to let this one go deep. This is caught inside the 15. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Flushed out right. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistled. 
It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. No, 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 no. Check. Patriots. Yeah. Now back to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Five yards that time on the completion. And now it's third and goal. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. Being chased out left. He can run for it, and he will. Only able to get back a yard for his efforts, and that leads us to fourth down. The field goal does you no good, so they're going to stay out there and go for it on four. Here we go now. Green. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. And now following that sack, looks like we've got an injured man down there on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back. They're going to get tested deep. That's why they're going to put a couple of extra guys back there to try and prevent that. Yeah, late in the fourth quarter here, trying to preserve the lead. Now he's forced out right. Now he'll let it go deep. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Morgan Burnett. Fourth quarter right now in Atlanta. And in a very offensive-minded game, the Falcons have taken the lead. Matt Ryan, nearly 400 passing yards. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for Green Bay, their good start continues as they get their record up to 4-2. and two. And they'll return home next week to take on the New Orleans Saints. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, they can't quite seem to turn things around as they fall into 2-4 and four now on the year. And they'll be at home for one next week as the Baltimore Ravens come to town. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. From Minneapolis, so long, everybody. And with that so long, we welcome you back up here in the booth where a game that looked somewhat attainable here at the beginning of the second half, as the game progressed, slipped more and more away from the Minnesota Vikings. The offensive line crumbling this game, allowing 10 or more sacks. We're going to get the final number, but uh, yeah, a um, lot of thing, a lot of things we could blame this on. Number one, well, I got three things we could blame this on. Number one, and I'm going to use the S word here: the defense played soft. Yes. You hate to hear that, especially when you're talking about a uh, NFL team. Defense was very soft today. Um, open field tackles, tackling in general, just pretty bad. The corners again had a, uh, a a tough time with these receivers, as you can see, Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb. Um, they did have some breakups. <clears throat> the defense was good at times, but overall, most of the time, they played soft and uh, not that good. Um, and we had another injury. Uh, the starting quarterback went down. So uh, number two, the offensive line. As the game went on, the offensive line became very tired. We spent a lot of time on the field today. Um, the possession time, 24 minutes and 23 seconds. Of course, the Packers only having 15-37. Uh, no penalties. Um, had to go for it on a lot of fourth, down, fourth downs. We are one and four. Nine for 17, 52%. On third downs, two turnovers. Um, yeah, and then number three, the play of the quarterbacks. Um, two interceptions today against three inter uh, three touchdowns. But we're going to get into these stats. We're going to get you back to the main screen where we will preview next week's game against the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, QB rating, 107.4 for Smeagol. He was 27 of 47. That is 50 cent. 57% completion percentage for those of you that didn't know how to do math or simply didn't look over here. Second game in a row 
with 500 plus yards, 508. Three touchdowns, one interception. So in his last two games, he has eight touchdowns and one interception. He was becoming hot here. But anytime you got to throw the ball 47 times, that doesn't bode well for the scoreboard. Um, just looking at the stat line, you could tell that they were having some tough times completely abandoning the run game in the third and in the fourth quarter. Kenny Erickson in relief for Smeagol came in in the fourth late. 21.9. Uh, Smeagol left with a rib injury. We'll get that as soon as we get back to the main screen. Hopefully he won't be out a game or four. <laughs> Kenny Erickson, 21.9. QB rating. Uh, two for four, 50% completion percentage, 17 yards, and the pick. Rushing, it, it again went to Justin Sandman. 12 for 95. No touchdown. Smeagol, 5 for 34. Now that's sad. When your quarterback runs more than half your running back roster and the only rushing touchdown, it's not good. But this Packers defense was pretty good coming into this one. Sam Gable, 4 for 15. Daniel Hendricks, 4 for 21. Derek Fay, he only got two carries for four yards. He really didn't do much. Um, there wasn't really much for him, so they kind of gave up on him. And they only ran the ball for two and a half quarters here. Of course, abandoning the run game after that first possession um, there in the third quarter. Uh, one for six. Uh, one thing I, I failed to do was look at the sacks. And for that, we're going to have to go to the Packers side. Going to go to the defense. Look at sacks. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven sacks for the Packers. Jake Ryan getting three of those and eleven tackles. Must be nice. They got a double double there. Uh, Twelve. Well, actually, they got a they got a quad double. For those of you that don't know, Randy Replay calls triple doubles for three defenders that have double digit tackles this would be a quad because there's four haha <laughs> clinton dicks with the fourth and final one um back to the back to the rushing game and then we'll go over to the receiving darian wilson led the team with five catches the wide receivers had a double double uh well, no, that wouldn't be a double-double. That'd be a triple-double because three with two. So, <laughs> uh, five receptions, 161 yards, two touchdowns. Very good games back-to-back. -back. Darian Wilson having lots of big plays down the field. Uh, longest catch of 52. Not the longest of the day. Blake Letelier had that of 54. Uh, Anthony Bisbee, five for 45. Blake Letelier, four for 102 and one touchdown. Luke Slazuski, three for 44. Lou Wang, 3 for 36. Luis Gonzalez, 2 for 12. Travis Lee, after his big game last week, held in check, 2 for 21. The Packers obviously game planned every time he was in there. He did leave the game with an injury. Uh, dislocated thumb on the catching hand. We're going to take a look at that, and we're going to see what shakes loose there as well. So two injuries so far for the Minnesota Vikings. Jesse Peterson, 1 for 22. Josh Gable, 1 for 30. Cameron Quick, 1 for 38. Daniel Hendricks, 1 for 5. And Justin Sandman, one for nine. Robert Nichols was also targeted. No catches. Drops are the biggest issue here. Two by Josh Gable, one by Robert Nichols, of course. Uh, they had the corner listed as an eligible receiver. They threw to him. He dropped it. Jesse Peterson, Anthony Bisbee, Justin Sandman, Vandershoff, and Lou Wang each with drops. I know one of those. I do believe it was the... I want to say it was the Anthony Bisbee one. It was a big play. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, nobody cares about blocking, so we're going to go to defense and look at total tackles. Jerry Myers led the team with six. I think that gives him the overall tackle leader. We will get back and check on that as well. Robert Nichols with four. Danny Pickering, Rashid Sphinx with four. Paul Fritchie, Thomas Cross, Justin Lewis, Scott Rethwell with three. Poi Tralamalu, Otis McMiller. Ryan Bilo, Josiah Russell, Josh Fitzer, Jacob Pickering, and Matthew Arnzer, Kevin Fair with two, Thaddeus Rizzo, Luke Slazuski, Drew Ward, Travis Lee, Pat Elfline, Joe Berger, <clears throat> Dan Nolte, Richard Southey, Aaron Nelson, and Matthew Peterson all with one. Tackles for loss, we had a bunch. Two for Josiah Russell, Ryan Bilo, Thomas Cross, Jacob Pickering, Rashid Sphinx, and Jerry Myers with one. Sacks, we added one more. Jacob Pickering <clears throat> and Justin Lewis. 
No interceptions, although we had big opportunities there in the end zone in the fourth quarter to get an interception. At one point, Robert Nichols has had, would have had his third straight game with an interception, but uh, Jordy Nelson or Randall Cobb, I can't remember who it was there, batted it out of his hands. So he did have it, but wide receiver turned into a defender. No, uh, well, pass deflections. Jerry Myers had three. Thaddeus Rosu, Otis McMiller, Jacob Pickering, and Matthew Arnsdorf have had one. No forced fumbles, no fumble recoveries, no block kicks, no safeties, and no defensive touchdowns for your Minnesota Vikings today. <clears throat> Brandon Baker, three for th uh, uh, three, for three <laughs> 100%, 47 along, three for three on extra points. Taylor Pelina had one punt, 47, netting 47 as it went out of bounds at the one. Kick returns, Justin Sandman Vandershop had two for 54, longest of 30, and Jesse Peterson, seven for 186, longest of 31. Punt returns. Robert Nichols just had the one for six yards. And we're going to get you back to the main screen, check up on the injuries, and get you ready for Ravens-Vikings next week. Once again, Packers down the Vikings 57-36 to in U.S. Bank Stadium. This has been Randy Replay. I'll see you in just a moment. Ed, hello and welcome back to the main screen. One player is ready to negotiate his contract. We're going to take a look here quick. It's Nick Easton. No! <laughs> I don't think we're I think we're going to let him fall the free agency this uh, off season. We can scout players. We're not going to do that. We're going to do that uh, during the middle of the week. And we get ready for a season game against the, the Baltimore Ravens here at U.S. Bank Stadium. Four and two Ravens against the two and four Vikings needing wins here. Already six games into the season. Trade deadline is next week. I highly doubt we're going to utilize that. Maybe for another uh, offensive lineman, but I highly doubt we will. Travis Parker is available to return from injury. So he will be ready and available for the next game. Only has six yards on three carries. So he'll be playing with a proverbial chip on his shoulder, as it were. Um, we're going to check the injury report. I do think Smeagol is good to go. Okay, so Zachary Anderson had the shoulder tear. He's out for three more weeks. I forgot about that. Randy Replay messing up yet again. We played this game with only three cornerbacks on roster. So anytime there were... Uh, uh, Jerry Myers was thrown in there anytime there was a three wide receiver set. We only had two corners, and I think he did good. A couple pass deflections. Thomas Cross has regressed. And now sitting at a 77. He was a 79. Uh, Otis McMiller's climbed to an 80. Josiah Russell up to a 78. I do believe that is uh, new. Um, if we take a look at the offense, Smeagol is now a 79 because of his performances. Darian Wilson is a 79 still. Pretty good offensive line. And uh, still haven't filled the last three spots on the practice squad. We'll see what the uh, coaches want to do with that. Maybe scoop up some of these undrafted Linemen. Um, so, yeah, we lose to the Packers. The uh, Lions lost. Okay. So, still, it's anybody's division with a uh, nine more weeks of NFL football. Nine or ten, depending on how you want to look at it with the bye week. But nine more games being played. Um, and it's still anybody's division. Really, I mean, the Packers don't have an easy schedule coming up. Neither do the Vikings. Uh, we go to London in week eight against the Browns. And then uh, our bye week is week nine. That will be Randy Replay's bye week extravaganza. So be able to stay tuned for that. Be sure to. Um, of course, the Vikings playing as the away team in London. So that'll be interesting. So the Packers sit atop 4-2. Lions 2-4, Bears 2-4, and the Vikings 2-4. Looking ahead at the schedule, the next, um, okay, meant to go over to the team schedule. The next, um, division game we play six weeks from now in Detroit, of course, that being on Thanksgiving. So be sure to stay tuned for that. That is going to be potentially a big game. And then after that, we have Packers. Excuse me there on uh, 
I do believe that is Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve, one of the two. And then uh, the Bears there at the end of the season. Um, so this shaping up to be a pretty interesting um, season here. 9.30 a.m. kickoff in London. I do believe the Browns are still 0-4. Or 0-6 uh, now, rather. I do believe they do not have a win. We're going to go back and look at those aforementioned Browns. They lost to the Texans. So we can't look at the record. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, yeah, tough game. Call it what you will. Maybe it's Zachary Anderson, you know, kind of the leader of this um, backs, defensive backs. Maybe his leadership was very missed in this game. His first from injury. Um, could be the offensive line not playing up to par. I don't know. But uh, anytime you give up 11 sacks to your quarterback, you're not in a position to win. Anyway, we look ahead to the Ravens and Travis Parker's return for just his second game in seven. This has been Randy Replay.